Good evening and beyond the new, my fond fair Rouge Raiders. And how are you all doing today? <laughs> this is your humble narrator, Diomedes Rouge, here to bring you What If Deku Was a Bracadius? Oh, yes. Now, where we last left off. The U... well, no. The training camp. And Izuku has just practically, nearly single-handedly, drove away the villain force. After losing his temper and killing a pure, a few villains. <laughs> Oh, yes. Quite the show indeed, wouldn't you say? Let us pick up. <clears throat> I am Mizuku Midoriya. My goal in life is to be a hero. To show the world that just because you're a monster doesn't mean you can't fight for what's right or at least that was my goal but right now right now I don't care he thinks to himself as currently Several people are trying to <laughs> talk about him while he is being interrogated, so to speak. While well, he's not at any official police station yet, he has been detained by the heroes, and they are trying to figure things out. As Izuku continues on, how did things get like this? How could the situation devolve this greatly? Maybe they're right. Maybe monsters shouldn't try to be heroes. Or maybe... Maybe the rules for heroes should be a lot different. As All Might, or rather I should say All Mighty, is on the scene. Sorry, it's been a while. Izuku. Yes, Miss Almighty. What happened? Did you go into a blind rage? Why? My father. Your father? What about your father? He wasn't dead. But what do you mean? Of course he was. No. Miss Almighty, he wasn't. We were fooled. That man, that thing that was going around killing other heroes, destroying other heroes, that monster was him. It was him. Bracadios. One of the few creatures alive, one of the few monsters alive that could produce explosions of that magnitude. He It was him. He was here. He was in so much pain. What do you mean, Izuku? As some of the other heroes are listening in. 
They tortured him. They turned him into a weapon. He barely had enough sense left in his head to slow down for me to give him a final blow. What do you mean? He asked me. He asked you? He asked you to what? He asked me to save him. He asked me to end his suffering, to end his pain, because the things those people did couldn't be changed. It couldn't be reversed. He was stuck like that in eternal torment. So I did. I ended his pain. Okay. That doesn't explain he told me. What? Devour his crystal. His crystal? His Wyverian core. Wyverian crystal. Something a lot of us monsters have right in front of our chest plate. It absorbs excess vitamins, nutrients, and minerals and crist becomes a crystallized form. Yes, we know about it. Then you also know it's got a lot of power. It's kind of the reason our kind was hunted so drastically when we were in the early days. Yes, and, and, he made me eat his, eat his, yes, as a final request he asked me to, so you lost control, no, what, as other people start to turn their heads, what do you mean you didn't lose control? You, I went on a rampage, but it wasn't blind. It was calculated. Every move I made, every decision, every action, every death was calculated down to the T. Those people killed and more, killed and tortured my father. They ruined his existence. They made him live in constant pain and agony and turned him into a weapon. So I showed them what a real weapon could do. They wanted a monster while well, they created one. Izuku, I'm... Don't. Don't give me sweet words. Don't give me pity. Don't give me sorrow. Or any of that bull. Just... Don't. I... <sighs> it hurts so badly. I always felt like there was something strange. Now I know what it was. This entire time I thought he was dead. No. Why? Why? As Zuku begins to break down. Upon that, Katsuki comes over and begins to hold and pat him on the back. 
It's okay, Izu. It's okay. You're gonna be okay. So, scale of 1 to 10, how badly have I screwed up? What do you mean, Izu? Katsuki asks. Simple. I murdered villains. They were villains, but I still murdered them. How badly have I messed up? <laughs> None at all. All Might says. What do you mean, none at all? A few of the other heroes question, as well as some of the officers. He was fighting villains. He's a student. And your point being... He is a student currently undergoing training at UA Academy to gain control and master his powers. The sheer fact that he had a violent outburst of this magnitude proves that we did not do our research well enough and proves that in turn we are at fault. We should not have allowed him to come along here. We should have put more restrictions upon him due to his volatile nature. It is our failure as teachers and our failure as mentors that he was even able to do something of this magnitude, she says to the police officers and such. So you're saying we should forget about the killings? No. I'm saying that he had no choice. He was in a berserker mindset. He said he was thinking completely rationally. Does he look completely rational to you right now? Does he? You say he was thinking completely rationally. All I say is that he looks like a mentally disturbed young man right now who just witnessed and saw something that to be quite honest would put any one of you in a similar position he is was unable to properly cope with that with what he had to do and so he snapped and as he snapped the people who were attacking his friends his loved ones, they became his new targets. Then what about that whole, well, think about it like this. If you had a choice between saying that one of your people were completely sane and sacrificed them, or that one of them went insane, and chooses to take treatment, which one do you think would get more press? Which one do you think would be talked about more? Which one do you think would be more stereotyped? <sighs> exactly. He's a young man who's very mentally disturbed at the moment. So, We'll take him, and we'll watch over him. And we'll make sure none of this happens ever again. So you're asking us to forget about the people who died here? No. Not at all. We are asking you to take care of it properly. Proper paperwork. Proper everything. And once that's done... We'll make sure, on our end, that we explain the full situation. <clears throat> Alright, all my... That seems fair. Just keep the kid out of trouble. Will do. 
as the police turn around and go back into the forest to pick up the remains and such, or at least examine what's left of them. <laughs> as Izuku just sits there, arms crossed while, cr while sitting down, looking defeated. As Almighty goes up to him and pats him on the shoulder. It's gonna be okay, Izu. It's gonna be okay. Believe me. I know you didn't mean to do what you did. But I did. Not in that manner. Yes, you meant it at the time. You were blinded by rage, anger, and hatred. And that's hard for anyone to overcome. But do you still mean it? What do you mean? Would you still kill them right now? That hardly seems a point. Tell me. <sighs> Probably not. I figured. You're a good kid, Izu. And you're going to be a fine young hero. First, first we need to make sure that you're calm enough to handle the situation. I'm going to make sure that you get a specialized therapist on my dime. Therapist? Yes. Someone to help talk you over these new feelings that have erupted. <sighs> I really, really don't like that idea. As his hair, as his skin tone begins to turn a darker shade of red, uh, somewhat dull red. As his hair pigment goes from a nice neon bright green to a brighter and brighter shade of blue. As Almighty just thumps him on that. Ow! What? Calm down, for one. And two, yes, while you may not like the idea, you're going to go through with it. But why? Why do I have to go through with something like that? It's not like it's going to help much. Pardon me one moment, guys. As after that time passes forward yet again. And I do mean passes forward. By a decent amount. <laughs> a couple of days pass by going into a week. As Izuku now has therapy lesson sessions on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. As a therapist will come over to his house after school to, well, talk with him. As long as he agrees to do this, none of the events from that day will be uncovered. Nor will he ever go to jail as long as he properly abides by it due to the extreme circumstances that, well, <laughs> plagued this certain meeting. Well, not meeting, these pre- well, you get what I mean. Due to the extreme circumstances in which caused him to need a therapist him to begin with. <clears throat> As upon finally getting through with one session, Izuku's about to gives a call to, well, his girlfriend. Ida. Hey, uh, you, uh, 
You want to come over so we can talk? I... Listen, I, I know we haven't had a real heart-to-heart -heart recently and everything, but... I could use someone to talk to right now. Sure, Izu. I'll... I'll be there in a little bit. As... Izuku just waits at his house. Until... Ding dong. He runs to the door. <laughs> slings it open. And there she is. He lets her in gladly and... Basically asks if she needs something to drink or eat, and she says, No, Izu, I, I prefer we talk. Hmm? Why? What, what do you mean? Izu. You're a very special friend, and I care about you greatly. Oh, no. But I saw what you did. But you know, Izu, I saw how you acted. You knocked me aside as I tried to help you. But, but I know, Izu, I had to attack you along with Almighty. get you to stop. So what are you saying? I'm saying that while I still love you, that I don't think we should be in a relationship. At least not at the moment. But, but, no, Izu. You know I'm right. Right. Okay. You'll always be family to me, Izu. You always have, you always will. But right now you need to sort some things out. And... Maybe one day after you have, we'll see about starting things over. Right. Starting over. Okay, Izu. I'll... I'll talk with you later. Right. I'll... I'll talk with you later. Bye. Ida. As she walks out. And Izuku heads off to the training arena out in his backyard. <coughs> he sees the old place and he even sees the remodeled spot of concrete where when he was younger and <laughs> full of so much vigor smashed through the floor on the ground and drilled all the way to the outside after the girls got, well, right in front of him and started berating, or rather, started trying to give him a talking to. He smiles at first, and then he gets the heavy sandbag, and he starts laying into it, blow after blow, hit after hit. The only thing that can be heard from behind, from this training area is the sound of fist against bag and chains rattling as it tries to hold back, well, 
contain the immense force of power traveling through it. After shake, after shake, after shake, punch, after punch, after punch, rattling this sandbag, it eventually breaks. And Izuku has to go and grab another one and set it up and start again. He is hurt. He is feeling very low at this point. And that is when someone else takes notice. <laughs> Hello, boss. Yes, Mr. LaFleur. Yes, it seems as if... Young Mr. Izuku... Is... Almost ready. Oh, and how so? Well... If I must say so, sir... The way he's attacking the bags as well as seeing his current emotional state. <laughs> I say with a bit of prodding and tweaking, he would be most advantageous. And, as long as he is less rambunctious than his father, could be quite the test subject. I see. Keep further eye on him. And wait. Do not move without my say-so. After all, I can't afford to keep on remaking you, Mr. Lafleur. But of course, sir. I would never do anything against your wishes. After all... <laughs> It is the duty of all monsters to bow to their king. Indeed. Now, keep an eye on him. As you command, sire. And so he does. Unknowingly and unwillingly. Izuku is being sized up by more than just the heroes and more than just the villains. Because I tell you, they're quite interested as well. Seeing the raw destructive prowess this creature held. Oh yeah. Especially... Especially all for one after hearing about it. Would love to get his hands on such a specimen. To see what he could do with it. <laughs> Possibly even Nomu it into something even greater. But that... That will be a story for another day. For this is set up. This is exposition. This is a little tiny morsel before I provide you the meat of the meal. That will be coming very soon. Or rather, tomorrow. <laughs> Have a good evening. And this has been your humble narrator, Diomedes Rouge. Stay safe, my Rouge Raiders.